So we have the bias shocky set up. Let's start turning up the bias. So we're not quite ready to beat this uh, crystal set into the ground yet. We've got a little more to discuss. Um, one thing that's interesting with crystal sets is the variations between diodes. It's become almost a, an obsession uh, to discover some new diode or some uh, more wonderful diode to use in your crystal set. And it gets quite scientific, in fact. Uh, one of the guys that uh, kind of made this his retirement hobby was uh, Ben Tung. Ben was a, an engineer and uh, one of those uber engineers who right out of school you could tell he was going to be uh, the best there was and uh, he came out of school and went to a company called Panoramic Radio and uh, they had been pretty famous during the war uh, making panoramic adapters. This was a way to see signals and if you're chasing down enemy signals you want to see them so uh, you may be concentrating on a certain frequency and the enemy is slightly off frequency and you miss them completely with your super heterodyne receiver. But with a panoramic adapter you could locate these signals very easily to the right or to the left of your signal. So he joined that company in the uh, uh, late 40s, 44, 45 time frame, just after the war, and uh, rose to uh, chief engineer almost instantly. This happens with really smart kids out of school when they have uh, special abilities. In fact, it happened to a friend of mine. His son uh, came out of school and uh, within five years was chief engineer at Fender Guitar of all places, uh, bringing DSP to Fender Guitar so they could emulate tubes. So it does still happen. Uh, you, you've got the Uber kid and he rises to the top. In 1950, he joined Ike Blonder and formed the famous company Blonder Tongue and uh, he was uh, working on foundational uh, audio and video systems that would be used later in the cable industry and the head-end cable industry and the distribution industry in the cable TV network, uh, cable TV system. But uh, Ben developed uh, the audio spectrum analyzer, you might have heard of that. That's how you analyze audio signals for their harmonics, still in use today. He also developed the inductorless graphic equalizer. This is a device that allows you to set uh, the gain independently by band in the audio spectrum. So he, uh, his foundational work and patents uh, uh, were in inductorless or op-amp style uh, graphic equalizers using tubes. So by the time he got into his retirement years, he got bored and decided to take on crystal radios as a hobby project. So imagine taking one of the top engineers in the nation and having him start to play with crystal radios. Pretty soon you're going to learn something. So as a detector, the, uh, the diode is actually quite good. It's not super sensitive, but it can handle uh, signals in the nanowatts all the way up to the milliwatts. Um, it does an adequate job as a power detector. It can be used uh, as a foundation for a power meter. Uh, we're using it, of course, to strip off the audio in a demodulator fashion. But uh, if you think of it, it can handle signals from minus 60 dBm all the way up to probably almost plus 20 dBm. That's a good dynamic range for such a simple device. Well, I have replaced our little screw and washer set up with a pair of alligator clips. And we can push these alligator clips and we can install various diodes into our crystal set. And we can look at our AC millivoltmeter and see what the detected audio looks like. Here's a nice grouping of germanium diodes. Uh, the one in the back is uh, vintage 1950s 1N34. Uh, there's a 1N82 to the right of it with the red band. And then a group of 1N270s and a bunch of pullouts from uh, transistor radios. They're all germanium uh, vintage diodes. Some are a uh, new manufacturer, probably from the 80s, but most of them are uh, probably from the 70s, 60s and 70s. So we will try these in the crystal set. We will look at the forward and reverse characteristics of the diodes and just see if there's any drastic uh, conclusions that we can come to with germanium. So here's a grouping of Schottky diodes. We have some uh, some classic Schottkys. Uh, 
There's even a, uh, a big uh, 5800 uh, series power diode. Uh, here's a BAT-85. That's a very popular Shockey. Um, we've got a uh, 1N5711. We've got some small signal shot keys that are pullouts from uh, power supplies and things. And we even have a, uh, a microwave shot key from the uh, 80s. I think it's a Macom diode. Uh, shot key diodes have been used as uh, what they call crystal detectors in the defense market for many, many years. Uh, and there's a lot of these uh, microwave shot keys available as surplus. It would be interesting to try in uh, some of the higher frequency crystal sets that we're designing. But we will also try these in a zero bias condition. And we will uh, try them by applying a little bit of bias on them and see if we can get some different effects and maybe some improved sensitivity. I'm going to actually disconnect the output of the, uh, of the second alligator clip and leave it open and we will measure the front and back um, resistance of the diodes right in place. Yeah, nothing that this meter is going to do anything with anyway. For the purist, put some uh, clips on uh, some known insulators such as uh, FR4 circuit board material we still have to prove that our radio works with our diode, so i got a station that's pretty strong. Uh, let's look up at the meter for a minute. Yeah, it's doing the job. Uh, heading a group of anything but... So, this is a good uh, station to use as a high signal type uh, performance indicator. We also need to find a station that we would consider to be a weak signal because you'll find that the diode has a square law region and it has a linear region. This station uh, is obviously taking the diode into the linear region where things become compressed. So we're going to find a little bit weaker station. Okay, this is a much weaker station out of Boston. It's a Spanish station. So the scale, instead of being on the 100 millivolt scale, we're on the 10 millivolt scale. So we're popping around 2 to 3 millivolts RMS. This will be a good station to use for comparing the diodes. And of course, uh, we want to do this testing during the day using ground wave, not sky wave at night where signals are going up and down. When signals go up and down, the hams call that QSB. Ah, we've got a lightning storm coming in. So the crystal radio is telling us that uh, we've got a storm coming. I don't see anything outside, but we've got something in the air to cause that. And I just heard uh, thunder, so uh, it's a little ways away now, but I might suspend operation until this thunderstorm goes over. This is mid-March in New Hampshire, a very early thunderstorm. There's been a, uh, a strong storm coming in from the Midwest. Uh, they're calling it a, uh, a bomb, <laughs> and that's going to hit us today as a rainstorm. Uh, reviewing, we are using an amplifier. It's the LM386, and it's set at a fairly low volume. Okay, in this diode we have 0.243 on the forward. And we're not getting a reading on the reverse with this meter. We'd have to have a better meter to be able to, uh, to read that. So without a curve tracer or some other uh, more sophisticated instrument, we can't really tell much when we have the diode in the uh, reverse position when we're in the uh, diode mode on the meter. 
However, we can go back to the ohms position on the meter. And uh, as you can see, the meter auto ranged and it's telling us that uh, we have 479 or 0.477 meg or 477k of reverse resistance on this germanium diode. So that's how we can do some qualitative uh, measurements using the meter. If the meter happens to be on the wrong range, let me bring it down. See, if I'm on the ohms range, forget it. Kilo ohms, nothing. Higher kilo ohms, higher kilo ohms. Finally, I have to go all the way into the meg range before the meter will even read. So um, make sure you try the different ranges on your meter. And what we're doing is we're comparing the back resistance of these uh, diodes to other diodes. And we're looking for the diode that has the, uh, the higher number. Here's the one in 5711 shock key. It's measuring a back resistance of uh, 0.5 megs. Very good uh, diode. It likely has uh, a fairly high breakdown voltage compared to the germaniums. Now we're looking at our old Sylvania diode and you can see that it's not quite as good. It has a uh, reverse resistance of around a 100k as opposed to uh, almost uh, half a meg on the uh, more modern diode. It is climbing though. So all this really means is that the germaniums have more leakage than the shockies. All things being equal, the shockies should outperform the germaniums if they're biased properly. So here we are, and it looks like we have 0.240 on that diode. So this uh, second diode is 0.239. It's only uh, a very small difference between it and the other diode. They're virtually identical. You would expect that. They're from the same lot. They came out of one of those 25-pack uh, 1N270 one kits that Radio Shack used to sell. So these diodes are virtually identical and uh, the diode should give almost identical output and the output is virtually identical both on the meter and listen. Okay, this is the vintage Sylvania 1N34 It's pretty good, it's probably better than those diodes imagine this, this diode has been soldered in, in and out of circuits, it's been floating around in a junk box, I got a hold of it, it's been floating around in my junk box, and it still works perfectly. Ah. And we can see that it has a lower forward uh, voltage drop, so yes, this is a little bit better diode than the one in 270s, and uh, the meter is showing this. Moved on to the Shockey diodes. This is a DO35 small signal shock key. Small signal shock keys um, are very fast switching diodes or they're diodes that are actually used in RF circuits like mixers or detectors. This is one that's been removed from a, from a circuit. It's actually working quite well. It did require that I retune. Wow, that's not bad. That shot key is beating uh, some of the germaniums that I've tested. 0.224 forward with the same uh, current that the meter is putting through. So here is a 1 in 914 silicon diode. This is a switching diode. Nothing at all coming out on this week's station. The forward voltage drop on the switching diode is 0.561. So clearly on weak signals a diode with a uh, with a voltage drop like this is not going to do any uh, work at all. Okay, here's a BAT85, a very common shock key diode. BAT85 seems to be down a little bit and sure enough on the meter it is down. However, it is detected. BAT85 has a fairly low voltage drop, 0.266, but it's just not doing a good job detecting compared to the uh, germaniums in that first uh, shot key that we tested. Okay, the one in 5711. Uh, the old HP diode. It's doing a good job. 
It's just about identical to the BAT 85's forward drop at this current, but uh, doing a much better job detecting the weak signals. Isn't that interesting? 1N5817 power diode. This is a 1 amp power diode. I had to ridiculously untune the, uh, the radio, go up in frequency, or actually go lower in capacitance to tune in the same station. But it's doing a good job. Um, so that tells you that this particular diode has a lot of capacitance compared to the others. It had to be pretty radically uh, retuned, but it's doing a good job. This is a Shockey power diode. Wow, the Shockey power diode has a forward drop of 0.147. You have to remember, uh, usually a power diode is nothing but a bunch of Shockey rectifiers that are all put in parallel on the die or on the silicon chip. So uh, you can do the same thing by putting diodes in parallel. You will get a lot more capacitance. It will restrict your tuning range and you'll have to do some matching with your taps. But that's something to remember. You can lower the uh, forward impedance by putting diodes in parallel. And that's really all power diodes are. So what are we doing when we're biasing a detector? We really want to overcome that cut-in voltage. The voltage that uh, we've been seeing that's been between 0.2 and 0.4 volts. We'd like to get the diode to turn on almost immediately to be the most sensitive and to pick up the weakest signals. So we need to put some current into the diode to turn it on or to almost turn it on. It's very similar to biasing an amplifier. So once we get the, uh, the diode conducting, it's much easier for the diode to continue conducting with signals. So with a 1.5 volt battery, we can take care of something between a 0.3 to 0.7 volt forward drop on the diode. Divide that by 4700 and you get 42 microamps. We really only need about 20 microamps to bias a Shockey detector. Here's somebody force feeding it right in through the diode up front. This is right off the web. And uh, another one, uh, he's using a choke. He's feeding the diode directly uh, through the choke. The choke would be invisible to the, uh, to the RF, hopefully. So you, there's plenty of uh, systems on the web that you can find where people are biasing diodes successfully. Here's a simple one. We're running the current up through the headphones. And uh, we have the adjustable pot. The current comes up through the headphones, turns on the diode, and uh, completes the circuit to ground. If you flip the diode in the other direction, so it's a positive going uh, detector, you need a negative bias. So we flip the diode, we flip the capacitor, and flip the battery, and voila, bias shock key detector. Um, you can uh, feed it up front through the, uh, actually the input coil. Uh, here's, a, here's one where we're sending the current up through the coil through the diode with a positive voltage. And uh, let's see how these things work. Let's build up one of these. For WBZ Boston's News Radio, 54 in Boston. Reed's Ferry Sheds 10% off sale ends this Sunday. See yours online at reedsferry.com, then make the call. Call 888-85-SHEDS. 10% off a Reed's Ferry On stronger shed. stations, the bias doesn't seem to make as much difference. This Friday morning and on the Ring Central News but when we have a weaker station... Here's a fairly uh, weak station. It's, uh, it's about 5 millivolts output. And now let's try a Shockey diode. This is the BAT 85. Okay. BAT 85's down just a little bit compared to the germanium, but not bad. Insert the battery.
5225sumppumpgeeks.com. If you can't seem to stay ahead of your bills, then this message is for you. How would you like to have a large portion of your credit card debt, medical bills, and department store debt forgiven? National Credit Card Relief would like to give you... Okay, it's starting to beat the, uh, the germanium at this point with the bias. Okay, now we have a silicon diode. The silicon diode, of course, has no output whatsoever. And remember, the silicon diode had five or 600 millivolts of uh, forward drop. Now we'll start the bias. Okay. The silicon diode needs more bias, of course, to overcome the, the forward drop. But we are now using a 1N914 silicon diode as a detector. So, by overcoming the voltage drop with the uh, bias adjustment, we can make almost any small signal diode or high-speed switching diode perform as a detector. Now, is it a crystal set anymore? It's still passive, but we are using some voltage on the diode. So let's take a look at the circuit that I've actually got on the board. We're biasing uh, right directly into the diode with a positive voltage from a 10K pot, that's even 0 to 1.5 volts, and sending it through a 47K resistor, and that's limiting the current. It's also presenting a load for the detector, and it's limiting the current to 20 to 30 microamps. Let's take a look at the, uh, the way that it's uh, built on the board. As you can see, we have to uh, use a capacitor going into the amplifier to remove the DC so it doesn't go into the amplifier. Now, have you ever thought of using a voltage doubler as a crystal set? Voltage doubler, this half-wave doubler circuit, C2 charges up, C3 charges up, they're essentially in series, so it doubles the voltage, and you can get more output. You can also bias these, and uh, you need to turn on two junctions. Two junctions means that you need a little more voltage, so the pot will have to be turned a little further, uh, but I still believe that a 1.5 volt battery is probably the right idea for the voltage doubler circuits. So there's some homework for you. Let's see if you can make a voltage doubling crystal set. This is with a 1N914 switching diode with bias. Biasing detector diodes is nothing new. It's been used in the military for radar type receivers probably since the 50s. Um, Schottky diodes, especially high frequency Schottky diodes, do have a barrier to overcome and normally these are biased diodes. Sometimes they're operated in pairs into a differential amplifier to overcome the temperature drift that occurs when you take the detector or the biased diode into an extreme environment. What we want to do is we want the compensation diode to overcome the drift of the main detector diode. So this is a very common uh, circuit to use in the defense industry, and it's, uh, it's been used in the crystal set society probably now for about 25 years. Hope you've enjoyed this video on biasing diodes.